One day, I learned the secret my husband had been keeping from me. I was right. My premonition had come true, and I was struck by an incredible feeling. Even though there were cracks in our marriage, it didn't mean that I didn't have feelings for my husband. What can I do now while I'm not feeling well? It's hard. I want to run away. While these feelings were filling me up, I may have already made up my mind. This is not something I can ask others to do. I had to act on my own. I was determined, so I pushed myself to the limit and headed for a place, not knowing that the ultimate life altering choice awaited me. My name is Jane Stewart, 29 years old. I'm currently a housewife, busy with the daily chores of the house. I met my husband Trevor three years ago. This was when I was still an office worker. I met him through work, and we were the same age. We started seeing each other regularly, and after about a year and a half of dating, we became husband and wife. When we got married, I decided to become a full time housewife, following my husband's wish. I wasn't particularly attached to my job, so we agreed that I would stay at home. We started our married life in a house that my father built in my name. But at the time, I never expected it. I never thought that this marriage would end like that. We were so happy during the first six months. I worked hard every day to keep the house clean for my beloved husband. But then, I started to feel something strange. At first, it was really a trivial thing. My husband, who had never worked late before, Didn't come home until after 9 p.m. without a single notice. Normally, when he has to work overtime, he would send a message saying that he would be late. But on this particular day, for some reason, he didn't contact me at all. I sent a few messages and made a few phone calls, but there was no response. I waited restlessly in the living room. Until my husband finally came home after 11 p.m., I quickly got up and headed for the front door. When I called out his name, he was startled for a moment. Jane, why are you still up? I hadn't heard from you and I was worried. What were you doing out this late at night? What's that supposed to mean? Of course I was working overtime. And you didn't call me at all until this hour? Oh, I've been especially busy today. I'm sure there will be more days like this from now on. My husband pushed me away and said he was tired and wanted to take a bath and go to bed and headed to the bathroom. His attitude was so casual that I felt foolish for worrying about him. What the hell was that attitude? Do you have any idea how worried I was? He could have at least said sorry for not being able to contact me. I suppressed my rising irritation and headed for the bedroom. That day, I wrapped myself up in my comforter and forced myself to sleep. Our marriage changed forever after that day. My husband started working overtime almost every day, and he also started working on his days off. I thought it was strange. And tried to discuss it with him. But he insisted that it was because he was working overtime. Then, I realized something. I noticed that my husband, who was supposed to be working overtime, smelled like he had taken a shower. There was only one reason why he was late coming home. One evening, Trevor came home after midnight, so I began. Hey, Trevor. What are you really doing? Coming home this late? I don't know what you're talking about. And don't make me repeat myself. I've been telling you, I'm just working overtime. That's a lot of overtime. Before we were married, you hardly ever worked overtime. It can't be helped. It's a busy time now. But working on your days off seems a little too much. Besides, you are supposed to be at work. But your suit smells so good. Smells good? 
like after a shower. Why do you smell like that? When I questioned him about it, his eyes widened and he fell silent. But he quickly regains his composure and tells me with no hesitation, "It's just your imagination. If it were to smell good, it's probably because of the company." Is the company sent? I'm working overtime, so of course there are other employees around. And since I'm in the same space as the female employees, it's possible that their smell transferred onto me. I don't think it's possible for the smell to be transferred unless they are in close proximity. Shut up! You've been nagging me so much these days, and you are always complaining. Who do you think helps you live your life? How could he backtrack after all this? I'm honestly disappointed in his inability to have a proper discussion. Not so long ago, we used to be able to have a proper discussion about our differences. He's obviously angry because he has something to hide. But in order to get him to admit he was cheating on me, I had to have proof. From that day on. I decided to look for evidence of the affair. Then, a few days later, I saw Trevor's phone on the living room table. In any case, I needed a passcode to open it. As I looked at the phone with trepidation, he received a message notification. It was from someone named Rachel. I had a great time yesterday. I can't wait to see you again. I'm really looking forward to our upcoming anniversary trip. We've been dating for half a year now, right? When are you and your wife getting divorced? I can't wait to marry you, Trevor. The text was written as if they were lovers, and my hands trembled as I held the phone in my hand. I could feel my breathing gradually getting rougher and rougher. I knew it, just as I thought. Trevor was having an affair. For six months now, I couldn't believe it. He cheated on me less than a year after we got married. He had been lying about working late while he was meeting another woman. I was nauseous, probably because I hadn't been feeling well recently, and hadn't been eating well. My body was more honest than I thought. After a while, my husband came out of the bath, so I asked him, "Trevor." Who is Rachel? My husband responded with a simple "What?" and glared at me. I guess he saw the phone in my hand and knew what I was talking about. He forcibly took the phone from me and shouted at me, "Hey, don't peek into people's phones without permission. Don't you have any sense of privacy? How can you say that after cheating on me? I'm not having an affair. Do you have any proof?" Proof? The proof is right there. Then my husband deleted the message notification on his screen, and put on a triumphant look on his face. Then he asked me where the proof was again. I can't show him the message again because I can't unlock his phone. The evidence I had obtained was now lost in front of my eyes. As I bit my lower lip in frustration, my husband simply said to me. If you suspect me of cheating, you'd better come up with evidence. It's libel, isn't it? What? What are you talking about? How insensitive can you be? You're the one who started saying I was cheating on you. I really don't feel like coming back to this house to be accused of cheating, which I didn't do. I can't believe it. Whose fault do you think this is? If you say any more baseless things. I'm divorcing you, okay? I didn't cheat on you, so you have no right to demand alimony from me. I feel sorry for you, though. My husband is grinning and smiling wickedly, observing my reaction. At that moment, the negative feelings I had been trying so hard to suppress had burst inside of me, making fun of me like that. I can't keep quiet any longer, just because I'm a housewife. Doesn't mean I can't do anything. I'm going to do everything I can do to get back at him. A few days later, 
I headed to the detective agency I had researched during the daytime on a weekend, so that my husband would not find out. With a queasy feeling in my stomach, I requested an investigation into my husband's infidelity. When I explained the situation, the person in charge at the agency immediately agreed to the request. Understood. Let's start the investigation right away. Thank you. But there is one problem. A problem? The detective nodded a little gloomily and then looked at me straight in the eye. We can start investigating your husband right away. But you're a housewife, aren't you, Mrs. Stewart? Yes. Is that a problem? No. The request itself can be done, but it will cost some amount of money. Many full time housewives may be able to request an affair investigation, but have trouble paying. Oh, I see. Even if you are able to divorce your husband, you may have trouble making ends meet afterwards. Are you prepared for that? Yes, I've already decided. I won't let him do what he wants anymore. The person in church nodded emphatically in response to my words. Thus, the request for an unfair investigation was established. After leaving the detective agency, I headed to the hospital to find out the cause of the health problems I had been enduring. After obtaining a series of tests, an endoscopy revealed a startling diagnosis. Mrs. Stewart, you have a stomach ulcer and are bleeding from the side. Why have you let it go this far? What? Bleeding? You are in pretty bad shape. I'm sure it's just fatigue and stress, but you have been holding it in too long. Well, I've been a little busy. I'm afraid you will have to stay with us for about two weeks. Please let your family know. I can't wrap my head around a diagnosis I didn't expect. But the fact that I will be in the hospital means that I won't see my husband for a while. It's true that he rarely comes home, but that doesn't mean we don't see each other at all. And by being in the hospital, I won't see him completely for two weeks. That was the best stress reliever for me right now. I leave the hospital once during my lunch break to call my husband, but he never returned my calls, and no matter how many times I tried to reach him, there was no response. I had no choice but to leave a message and go back to the hospital. After completing the admission procedures, I was shown to my room. At the end of the day, I tried calling again. But there was still no answer. Of course, I didn't have a change of clothes, so I had to buy some at the hospital store. I would like to explain your symptoms to your family. That's what the doctor told me. But as long as I couldn't reach him, there was nothing I could do. It was more than 10 days after my hospitalization when my husband finally contacted me. I'm on my way to the hospital. That was the only message I received, and I had my doubts. Why now, when I will be discharged soon? I had already told him I had bought everything I needed at the store, so there was no need for him to come all the way here. While I was waiting for my husband, I got a call from the detective agency. Sure enough, Trevor was guilty of cheating. My husband was having an affair with a co-worker. They said they had gathered enough photographic evidence and that it would be advantageous for my divorce. I ended the call by informing them of my current condition and telling them that I would be on my way as soon as I was discharged from the hospital. A few hours later, my husband appeared in my hospital room with a confident expression on his face. As soon as he greeted me with a long time no see, he began to speak with great enthusiasm. I have something important to tell you today. Something important? Even if you get out of the hospital, you won't have a home to go back to. What? What are you talking about? I'm divorcing you and change the house title to me so you can get lost. 
My husband said that with a smirk on his face. How can one say get lost to his wife, even as a joke? Not so long ago, I would have been hurt by these words and would have been in tears. But now, I no longer have any feelings for my husband. I smiled and told him, "You divorced me. Thank you so much." What? Thank you? Yeah. Thank you for going through the hassle of the divorce process. Actually, I was just about to request a divorce myself. What? Why? I told you. I still think you are cheating on me. I can't live with these feelings. Oh, so that's what this is about. So it's a consensual divorce then? Yes, of course. Okay then. You can go back to your parents when you get out of the hospital. After saying that, my husband left the hospital room humming a tune. I couldn't stop laughing at the sight of him. He's so stupid. He doesn't know anything. Do you think I'm going to keep quiet? I'm going to make sure I get my revenge. A few days later, as soon as I was discharged from the hospital, I headed to the detective agency. I received proof of the affair, and headed to the superior court on the same day. There, I confirmed our divorce. With these documents in hand, I went to my parents' house. My parents were surprised when I came home without warning. But when I revealed my husband's wrongdoings, my father's face turned red, and he exclaimed, "Cheating on you? How can he?" And that house was built for you, Jane. I know that. I looked into it myself. I don't know how you can change the owner of the house without permission. That's impossible. How the hell did he? If the owner is not present, you need a power of attorney from the registered owner, and I think Trevor wrote it without permission. A POA? Isn't that a crime? Of course. I've looked into that too. I went to a lawyer's office with the evidence in hand. I explained the situation, and they immediately proceeded to file a claim for compensation. Next, I contacted my in-laws and took our parents to the house where we used to spend our married life. When I entered the house with our parents, I found Trevor and his affair partner flirting in the living room. What the hell? Why are you here? And our parents too. I came here today to tell you something important. Something important? Get the hell out of here! This is my house now. My house? Don't make me laugh. This is a house my father built for me. Shut up! The owner has already been changed. If you don't leave, I will call the police. Why don't you call them? I think you're the one that's going to be in trouble. What the? Trevor's eyes changed color and stopped right up to me. As soon as he was right in front of me, I confronted him with the photo evidence I got from the agency. As soon as Trevor saw it, he started shaking and his face turned blue. Why do you have that? I hired the detective to get a favorable divorce. Wait a minute, favorable? You're not trying to get alimony, are you? Of course I am. Besides, you changed the name on the house and filed for divorce without permission, forging the registered owner's POA and forging the divorce papers are both crimes of document forgery and signature forgery. So basically, you're a criminal. What? Trevor probably didn't know it would be this big a deal. The same goes for the woman, who is also pale from hearing the exchange. Please, please pretend it never happened. My ex-husband begs for himself before he apologizes. I clearly told my pathetic ex-husband, "Pretend it never happened. Do you think you can get away with what you did? How can I forgive a scumbag?" Who cheated on his wife and even committed a crime? Jane, please shut up. 
You almost destroyed my body. And you betrayed not only me, but our parents as well. Get lost and go to hell. Go crawl in the bowels of hell with that woman right there. Trevor is screaming like he had gone mad, and my father and father-in-law take him outside. His affair partner was also kicked out, leaving them with nowhere to go. I then request a lump sum of alimony through my lawyer. The woman was fired from her job when the company found out about the affair, and she got into debt for the alimony payments. Trevor was convicted of forgery and was sentenced to six months in prison. Of course, there was no way he could live the same life after prison. After that, he would have to pay alimony and look for a job. But that's his punishment. I can only say he got what he deserved. I, on the other hand, live with my father and mother in the house we got back. The house is too big for one person to live in, so the life I have now is just fine. My marriage has failed, but I still have a long way to go in my life. From now on, I won't make better choices for my happiness. During my cervical cancer treatment, my husband said, if you can't have children, at least be a proper housewife. This led to his downfall. I had surgery to treat my cervix. Even on the day of the surgery and during my hospital stay, my husband didn't show up. When I returned home to him waiting, these words came flying at me. So, you're back from the surgery, huh? Welcome home, lazy bones. Huh? Timothy's remark may have been intended as a joke, but it's far too harsh. I'd only been away for four days, yet the house was a mess. Cups from instant noodles were piling up in the sink. If you're back, then hurry up and do the chores. As you can see, the house is a mess. I just had surgery on my cervix. I need to rest. At that, my husband twisted his face into a smirk. What do you mean, rest? If you can't make babies anymore, you might as well be the housekeeper. At least start with cleaning. I reached my limit at that moment. I just had surgery for cervical cancer, and he says this? That's incredibly rude. There's no point in being married to someone like this anymore. In the next moment, a voice echoed from behind. Is that all you have to say? Following this, Timothy would lose everything. My name is Emily Sanders. I'm a 30-year-old homemaker. My mother fell ill when I was in elementary school, and after a long struggle with illness, she passed away. Since then, I was raised by my father. When my father asked me, What do you want to become in the future? I answered, A nurse. My mother, who was chronically ill, always expressed gratitude towards nurses. So, I wanted to help people suffering from illness and injury. My father supported my dream and sent me to nursing school. The nursing job I started afterwards was tough, but fulfilling. After working night shifts and caring for others for several years, I realized I was nearing my late 20s without a boyfriend. At that time, one of my colleagues invited me to her wedding. There, I met Timothy, who would later become my husband. Timothy was my classmate and was 28 years old at the time. Despite his youth, he held a managerial position at a company manufacturing medical equipment. Emily, I seem to have fallen for you at first sight. At the end of the mixer, Timothy whispered that to me and gave me his contact information. Feeling no ill will, I contacted Timothy myself, and our relationship began. During our courtship, Timothy was kind to me. He understood my work, and I began to think, there's no one else like him. After dating for a year, Timothy proposed to me. Emily, please marry me. Let's build a happy family together. Timothy, thank you, I'm so happy. And thus, I accepted his proposal and became engaged. My father shed tears of joy at my marriage to Timothy. Next, it was finally time to visit Timothy's family. In his family home lived his father, Joseph, who was the president of the company where Timothy worked, MedAid Medical Co., and his mother, Nancy, the vice president. 
So, Timothy was working at his parents' company. That's why Timothy held a managerial position at such a young age. My in-laws warmly welcomed me. My goodness, Timothy bringing such a lovely young lady. Come on in, come on in. With a beaming smile, my mother-in-law handed me indoor slippers. As we were led into the living room, Timothy spoke again. I'm thinking of marrying Emily here. My father-in-law nodded and smiled at me, saying, Emily, we're of course wholeheartedly in favor of this marriage. By the way, Emily, how does your family feel about this marriage? Actually, my mother is no longer with us. I explained my family background. My in-laws listened with curious expressions. So I was raised by my father and became a nurse. I believe my late mother would have been happy about this marriage too. At this, my mother-in-law gently wiped away tears and took my hand. I see, I see. It must have been tough all this time. Your father is admirable, too. Oh, I must properly greet your father when I meet him. Timothy, make sure you protect Emily and make her happy, okay? As my father-in-law patted Timothy's back, Timothy furrowed his brows and said, I know, Dad. On the way back home, I told Timothy, your parents? They're wonderful people. I'm happy to become a part of the family. Really? They were very strict with me, the heir to the family, and I grew up scared of them when I was little. I got slapped around all the time. Well, if you put it that way. With Timothy scratching his head, I couldn't help but chuckle a bit. After that, Timothy and I registered our marriage. As a wedding gift... My father-in-law presented us with a condominium about an hour away from our hometown, so we decided to live there. Shortly thereafter, Timothy said to me, Hey, Emily, now that you're married, can you quit your job? Huh? I was taken aback. The hospital where I worked had been my place since graduating from nursing school, and I had good relationships with my colleagues and supervisors. More than anything, I loved being a nurse. I had always assumed that even after marriage, I would continue working. So I replied, I actually want to keep working even after we get married. But Timothy didn't seem pleased. Huh? There are plenty of people who could replace your job. We can live just fine with my income. After getting married, if you keep working, people might think I'm incompetent without a housewife. I kept refusing, but Timothy kept insisting. Still, when I persisted with, I won't quit being a nurse, he finally seemed to give up, or so I thought. And thus began our married life with both of us working. Just as I was thinking that, I immediately hit a wall. Timothy didn't do any housework at all. Since he had experienced living alone, there was no reason he couldn't do it. He wouldn't even take his dishes after eating, let alone do a single cleaning task. While I was doing chores at night, he would just lie on the sofa messing around with his phone. Since I also have a job, having to take care of all the housework honestly felt like a burden. When I was living alone, I could slack off by saying things like dinner can be something simple or cleaning can wait until the weekend, but with just the two of us living together, that wasn't an option anymore. Living like this, being the only one doing housework for months on end, I finally lost it with Timothy. Hey, Timothy, I have a favor to ask. Could you do a bit more housework? Then Timothy, without taking his eyes off his phone, said this. Huh? Can't you just keep doing it like you have been, Emily? I'm tired from work, you know. I have a job too, you know. It's not fair that I'm the only one who has to do all the housework. What's unfair about it? Household chores are traditionally the wife's job, and you chose to work, so stop complaining and balance work and housework properly. But, as I stood there dumbfounded, Timothy said this to me. I've been thinking for a while now that you're not doing enough housework. For dinner, instead of just salad, I want you to add two more dishes after the main course. And could you clean more thoroughly every day? Sometimes I feel embarrassed to even live in this room, you know? <laughs> but that's... Is it because you're working? So you're making excuses, huh? That's why I'm telling you to quit that job, didn't I? But I don't want to. I want to continue being a nurse. Fine, if you insist on that, I understand. At the time, he backed off easily, but two days later, he found out the hard way. Emily, I received this. What does it mean? 
My boss showed me a resignation letter with my name on it. Huh? No, I don't intend to quit. Is this your husband's handwriting by any chance? I won't delve too deep, but it seems there are complicated circumstances. I'll hold on to this, so make sure to talk it over with your husband. That day, I confronted Timothy, and my husband became angry. You can't even do housework properly, yet you want to work? That's too selfish. That's why I sent the resignation letter. But this is too much. Just quit your job. Otherwise, we can get a divorce, you know? Before we even reached our first wedding anniversary, I was presented with divorce papers, leaving me frozen. I didn't want to disappoint my father and his high hopes for us. Thinking that, I reluctantly said, I understand. I'll quit my job. You should have done that from the beginning. From now on, make sure to do everything around the house perfectly. After Timothy left, looking satisfied, I shed tears. Soon after, I became a full-time housewife, just as he wanted. But that was the beginning of hell. If anything wasn't done to Timothy's liking, he'd scold and belittle me. He even insulted me, saying things like, this is why women raised in broken homes are like this. Months passed in such a manner. Then another problem arose. Even after a year of marriage, we couldn't conceive. When I told him we weren't pregnant that month, he said, It seems like you're infertile after trying for a year. Yeah. Could it be because there's something wrong with you that you can't get pregnant? But before we got married, I had regular checkups and there were no issues. Fine, go to the doctor sometime and get checked out in detail. Upon Timothy's suggestion, I went to see a gynecologist. I hadn't been too concerned before marriage as I had been focused on work, but it turned out to be a blessing in disguise. The results of the examination left me shocked. An abnormality was found in my uterus, a mild cervical dysplasia. I was stunned. I recognized that term from my nursing days. So, it's cervical cancer? It's before it becomes cancerous, but if left untreated, it will develop into that. Let's start treatment from now on. I received an explanation from the doctor. The treatment involved a procedure called a saline resection, which would remove a part of the uterus. In a daze, I returned home and relayed everything to Timothy, just as I was told. And he said, Huh? You have cervical dysplasia? Is that a disease where a lot of people die from? Despite being shocked by his words, I explained, If I undergo surgery to remove part of the uterus, my life can be saved. Oh, I see. Are you going to have the surgery? Yes. Fine, but should we use insurance or pay out of our savings for the surgery? I don't want to waste money unnecessarily. His words opened my eyes. I had thought he would be concerned about my health, but instead he said such things. But I didn't have the energy left to stop Timothy. After a while, I told my mother-in-law about the surgery. She was surprised, but supported me. I was grateful for her support. Timothy didn't accompany me to the surgery. He didn't show up at the hospital that day or the day after. Two days after the procedure, I was discharged. That day, Timothy was at home because he had a day off. I'm back. Oh, is the surgery over? You look the same as usual. Huh? He might have meant it as a joke, but his words were too harsh. Even though I had only been away for four days, the house was a mess. There were cup noodle containers piled up in the sink. If you're back, then hurry up and do the housework. As you can see, the house is a mess. I just had surgery for cervical cancer. I need to rest. What do you mean, rest? If you can't have children anymore, you should at least be a proper housewife. <laughs> Start with cleaning. <laughs> At that moment, I reached my limit. This kind of talk to a wife who just has cervical cancer surgery? There's no point in being married to someone like this anymore. Suddenly, a voice came from behind. Timothy, is that all you have to say? Huh? Mom? And Dad? Appearing behind us were my in-laws, their faces red with anger. Emily said she was getting discharged, so we came to check on her. Since the front door was open, we let ourselves in. We heard everything from earlier. 
As my father-in-law said this in a low voice, Timothy's face turned pale. My mother-in-law stepped forward and looked at me. Emily, are you okay? Lie down or sit however you're comfortable. We'll take care of him. I took advantage of my mother-in-law's words and sat down. Then my mother-in-law said, Tell me what Timothy did to you. And I told her everything. Being forced to quit my job, being verbally abused, not receiving help with medical expenses, and not even receiving any visits. My parents-in-law, who had been silent until then, started trembling. Timothy, with a pale face, alternated between looking at me and his parents. Dad? Mom? That's not it. She's always slacking off on housework, so I have to say something or she won't do anything. Shut up, you piece of trash. You're not worthy of being called a husband. At my father-in-law's shout, Timothy trembled violently. Then my mother-in-law spoke quietly to Timothy. Timothy, do you remember when I had to be hospitalized because of cancer when you were in high school? It was news to me that my mother-in-law had cancer. At the time, your father was really worried and reassured me that he would take care of everything at home, so don't worry. Didn't you see your father like that? But mom... The one who's feeling most helpless here is Emily. Instead of caring for your wife, you treat her like dirt, you stupid son. My mother-in-law slapped Timothy's cheek. The sound echoed, and Timothy covered his cheek, his eyes wide with shock. Since we're married, isn't it my job to discipline my wife too? Isn't that how it's supposed to be? Are you still talking, you piece of trash? This time my father-in-law delivered a powerful punch to Timothy. As Timothy groaned, my father-in-law said, Our company is a medical equipment manufacturer. We do work that benefits patients. We can't let someone like you take over the company. You're fired. Huh? Fired? My mother-in-law followed up. Of course, we're also cutting ties with you. Get out of this house and never show your face again. Wait. Dad, Mom, please. Timothy was pleading with them, but... My in-laws didn't change their minds. Then Timothy started to cling to me. Emily, I'm sorry. I apologize, so please convince my parents too. You'll be in trouble without my income too, right? That's when I said firmly, Timothy, let's get divorced. I'll claim division of assets and compensation for mental anguish, so be prepared for that. B but... As Timothy started crying, my father-in-law grabbed him by the collar and dragged him off somewhere. Left behind, I was repeatedly apologized to by my mother-in-law. After a while, Timothy and I got divorced. Thanks to my father-in-law hiring a lawyer, the divorce went smoothly. I obtained assets division and compensation, and my in-laws even provided a substantial amount of money earned from selling the apartment as compensation for the trouble caused. Timothy was indeed fired from my father-in-law's company. Being kicked out of the house and having exhausted his savings on payments to me, he ended up crashing in a bathtubless apartment and now juggles multiple part-time jobs, I heard. Even hearing that, I feel no sympathy whatsoever. I want him to experience hardship. On the other hand, using the compensation, I moved out and started a new life. The recovery after surgery went well and I was able to return to work as a nurse. I chose to work in women's health. I wanted to be a support for those who went through what I did. Furthermore, two years after divorcing Timothy, I met someone and remarried and we were able to have children. Since my cervical cancer was detected early, it didn't affect my ability to conceive. I'm grateful to my in-laws who supported me during that time and I want to live happily with my own family from now on. My husband got his mistress pregnant and demanded a divorce. After the divorce, he called me in a panic because his baby was... You're done. Just divorce and get out of here already. My mother-in-law raises her voice at me. She's a despicable human. Seems like she only sees me as a tool for making babies and a submissive housekeeper. With a mother like this... It's no wonder my husband turned out so twisted. Of course, I'll go through with the divorce. I'm Vicky, 
a 32-year-old homemaker. It's been three years since I married Alex. We met through work, both handling clients on different sides. I was impressed with him from our first meeting. He was friendly, had a lovely smile, and was dedicated to his job. Even when it was tough to align our project directions due to differences in our company policies, he actively shared his opinions and tried to accommodate our requests. Seeing such a reliable side of him, I gradually found myself drawn to him. And it's turned out he was interested in me too, because he asked me out for dinner when our project settled down. When we went out, he showed me his attentive and gentlemanly side, leaving a great impression in the private too. Time flew by as we enjoyed our meals together, and soon we were regularly meeting up, bringing us closer. Then one day, he asked me to be his girlfriend, and we became exclusive. Being with such a wonderful guy made me feel giddy. I hadn't had much experience with the relationships, and the guys I dated before weren't particularly nice. So, having someone as kind as him was a first for me. Throughout our relationship, he treated me like a princess, making me feel loved. We continued dating without any major issues for a while. One day, he suggested going to a fancy restaurant. It wasn't our anniversary or either of our birthdays, so I wondered why such an upscale place. But then it hit me. I thought maybe he was going to pop the question. It had been a year since we became serious, and age-wise, we were at a suitable time for marriage. I wondered if he had a ring ready. I was anxious. My heart started racing at the thought, even though nothing was certain. I couldn't focus much at work that day. After work, we met up and headed to the restaurant. The place he'd reserved was beautiful, and I immediately fell in love. I wouldn't have been surprised if it was a Michelin star. The ambience and the service from the staff were impressive. And the food was out of this world. It felt like ages since I'd been captivated by dining out. It's amazing. The wine goes perfectly with the meat. Yeah, I'm glad we came to this place. As we enjoyed the delicious food, our moves lifted and conversation flowed naturally. And just as we finished dessert, he suddenly looked at me in seriousness. Is this it? Is he going to propose? I felt my heart racing and nerves kicking in. What's wrong? Vicky, there is something important I need to talk to you about. About what? I want you to have this. Alex took out a small box from his suit pocket. Opening it, he showed me the ring inside and asked, Vicky, will you marry me? I promise to take care of you and make you happy for the rest of your life. I had anticipated the possibility, but actually being proposed to make me super nervous. I blushed, feeling embarrassed and too giddy to speak properly, but I managed to give him an answer. Of course, I want to spend the rest of my life with you. Really? So you'll marry me? Yes, hon, I can't wait. His expression brightened up. I am the luckiest guy right now. I was worried you might say no. He seemed genuinely happy. I was thrilled to be proposed to as well. After that, we went to meet each other's parents. Both families were introduced to each other, and then we had a beautiful wedding. Many people came to celebrate with us, making it a memorable event. And so began our married life. He wanted me to be a homemaker, so I quit my job and focused on the household. I did my best to support Alex. Not long after we got married, I got pregnant. I never thought it would happen so soon, but finding it out was incredibly exciting. Really? Awesome! I'm gonna be a dad soon! Alex was over the moon. I thought he'd be a great dad, raising the baby together. My in-laws were thrilled to hear the news as well. You did well for a change, you know. Um, 
thanks. My mother-in-law, Rose, even praised me. To tell you the truth, I didn't really get along with her. She had consistently expressed her displeasure toward me since the wedding, always asked me when she would have grandchildren, and expressed her disappointment that I wasn't some career woman or a beauty. So, every time I went to my in-laws, it was uncomfortable. I mostly brushed it off, but the stress built up. I wanted to avoid dealing with her as much as possible. If she was happy about the pregnancy, I thought things would be better between us. I hoped she'd become a bit nicer to me. I prepared for childbirth with a little optimism. As the due date approached, Rose asked me, So, is it a boy or a girl? Ah, I just found out recently, it's a girl. A girl? Oh my god, are you kidding me? What's wrong? She suddenly raised her voice, startling me. You're supposed to have a boy to carry on the family name. What are you talking about? Nothing wrong with having a girl. We're not from some aristocratic family anyway. Oh, Steve, you're too nice to her, you know. Alex is an only child, so we need a boy. My father-in-law, Steve, tried to calm her down, but she persisted. I realized at the moment I'd never see eye to eye with her. She continued talking about how important it was to have a boy and called me useless. I didn't want to deal with the stress during pregnancy, so I decided to spend the last trimester at my parents' house. Being there helped me avoid Rose and I felt much more relaxed. Eventually, I gave birth to a healthy girl. Steve and Alex were smitten by her right away, holding her in turns, but Rose just watched from behind. She could have at least held her grandchild since she was her blood. I thought to myself, but I was already fed up with her so I kept my mouth shut. From then on, I spent my days struggling with housework and childcare. Our daughter cried a lot at night, which was tough, but she was an apple in my eye, so it didn't bother me at all. But there was something that bothered me a little. Alex started coming back home late. He came back close to midnight every day, and on weekends, he increasingly stayed out till morning. He still brought money home, and I was busy with our daughter, so I didn't pry too much. When our daughter turned two, he came to me one day, saying he needed to talk. I'm sorry, but I want a divorce. What the heck are you saying all of a sudden? Um, the girl I've been seeing got pregnant. What do you mean? Are you saying you've been cheating? Yeah. You loser. You were fooling around with another woman while I was doing all the parenting and housework. Please, don't get so upset. No kidding, I'm outraged. You betrayed me and our daughter. I know I messed up, but I've decided to start a new family, so... He chose to divorce me. I couldn't continue staying with a husband who cheated. So we agreed to divorce. In the midst of all that... Rose showed up at our house one day. What do you want? Just come to see your miserable face one last time. Is that so? Thinking about what a piece of work she was to come and mock me, I packed my things, pretending to listen to her. She put a disgusting grin on her face and kept speaking about soon-to-be her new daughter-in-law. Oh, she's outstanding. She's pregnant with a boy, you know. Quite a difference from someone who can only give birth to girls like you. She's young and beautiful too. I wish Alex had married her from the start. Then he wouldn't have to have to take this detour with you. He's such a wonderful man, you know. He deserves someone glamorous like her. She made it sound as if I were at fault. People who talked about things only from their perspective were all like that. They didn't realize how self-centered they were when looked at objectively. What's so wonderful about him? He's the lowest of the low for cheating and getting his mistress pregnant, isn't he? 
Or did you teach him that cheating is okay? You've given him a shameful education. How dare you speak to me like that? I'm just stating facts. Shut up! I'm saying having a boy is what matters, and that girl is way more useful than you anyway. You're done, so get out and divorce quickly. She raised her voice at me. Such a despicable human. She only saw me as a tool for making babies and a submissive housekeeper. With a parent like that, it was no wonder Alex turned out so twisted. Of course, I'll go through with the divorce. I gladly decline a man like him. Please, you don't have the authority to belittle my son. You just happen to marry him by luck. Lightning doesn't strike twice. If you understand, just get the heck out now. She tried to kick me out right then and there. Obviously, I didn't want to live with a cheating husband any longer either. I'll handle alimony and child support through my lawyer. Yeah, yeah. I guess it's something you desperately need, huh? Considering you're about to become broke. She mocked me until the very end. How rotten she was! I wasn't going to let her bother me, though. Breaking ties with such a low person was a blessing in disguise. Having my daughter around her grandmother wasn't good for her either. I grabbed her and left immediately, heading back to my parents' house. They welcomed us warmly. You went through a lot. You can stay here as long as you want. They really are the worst mother and son. It's great to have you and your granddaughter with us. It felt calming to be back home after so long. My daughter seemed happy to see Grandpa and Grandma. Then I took some time to plan for the future. First off, I needed to demand alimony and child support from Alex. With my dad's help, I got a lawyer and served him. He was stunned by the amount I demanded and quickly contacted my lawyer. After a vigorous negotiation, he eventually agreed to the alimony and child support payments. With the combined amount, it was quite substantial. We agreed on installment payments, and if he fell behind, his salary would be garnished. There was no way he could cry poverty and avoid payment. I also demanded compensation for the mental anguish caused by his affair and his mother's harassment. Both of them were surprised by that and fought back, but with medical records at evidence, they couldn't avoid payment. As a result, Alex ended up with a bill of one hundred thousand dollars. His salary wasn't even that high, so carrying such a large debt was going to be tough for him, especially since his girlfriend was pregnant. It was almost impossible to raise a child while carrying such a debt that was going to take years to pay off. Moreover, Rose and Steve were also going through a divorce at the same time. Steve couldn't take Rose's rampage anymore. He came to apologize to me and my parents and informed us about the divorce. Honestly, I was amazed by his patience in staying with someone like her for so many years. I really hoped he'd spend the rest of his life using his money and time for his own happiness. While living at my parents' house, I started looking for a new job. Thanks to the qualifications I already had, I landed a clerical job and returned to the workforce after a long time. At first, things didn't go as smoothly as I hoped, and it reminded me of when I first got a job right after college. I was the same back then. If I worked hard and stayed humble, I believed things would eventually work out. I threw myself into work. When I got home, my daughter greeted me with a big hug. Just that made all the fatigue disappear, and I felt motivated again. My mom cooked dinner, and enjoying the meal with the four of us, my parents, my daughter, and I gave me peace of mind. With their support, I faced each day as a single mother doing my best. Around the time my divorce was finalized, I suddenly got a call from Alex. It gave me a chill. 
I didn't even want to hear his voice and ignored calls at first. The phone kept ringing persistently, so I reluctantly answered. What do you want now? Why do you keep calling me? Hey, let me ask you one thing. Can a child have a different skin tone and hair color from its parents by some kind of gene mutation? What are you talking about all of a sudden? I mean, can a child born to Caucasian parents have a yellowish undertone to the skin? Can they have jet black straight hair? He sounded pretty shaken up over the phone. From what he was saying, I kind of figured out what he wanted to ask. Do you mean your baby's biracial? Ugh. Are you saying your wife got involved with an Asian origin and got pregnant? Don't say it so bluntly. I've been fooled. She said it was my kid and was a boy, so we got married. But I can't raise a child thinking it's mine when it's not. As he grows up, everyone will figure out he's not mine. But legally, you're the father on the birth certificate, right? Darn it. How did it come to this? Hey, can we start over? Excuse me? My mom and I will move in with you and your parents. We can be one big happy family. What the heck are you talking about? That's so gross. Gross? What do you mean? Come on, you know what I mean. Why do we have to live with your mom anyway? Listen, neither me nor my daughter have any love left for you. I don't want to see your face or talk to you. Honestly, I don't even want to hear your voice like this. Don't be so harsh. We used to love each other, didn't we? Please, I'm begging you. Save me and mom. You're the one who betrayed us. Stop saying things that only benefit you. You don't have the right to see us anymore. And I won't withdraw the alimony and child support demands, ever. Remember, if you ignore the payments, your salary will be garnished. Ugh. I hung up on him. But later, he and Rhodes showed up at the house. I took refuge in a room with my daughter, and my dad dealt with them. What do you come here for? Please, please let us stay with you. His brain must have been wired totally differently from a normal person's. Despite being harshly rejected by me, he had the nerve to show up with Rose. I assumed they were that desperate. But they underestimated us too much. My dad, being the gentle person he was, wouldn't have forgiven someone who betrayed his family. Stop talking nonsense and get out of here, or I'll call the police. Wait, just hear us out, please. You guys are just strangers to me now. We were once family, weren't we? I'll work and contribute to the household finances, too. I'll do the housework, too, so please let us stay. They adamantly insisted. Then a patrol car showed up. Oh my god, when did you call them? I can't believe you reported us. Enough with the nonsense. You're strangers, as I said before. In other words, trespassers. Obviously, I'll report them. I had asked my wife to call the cops already. Oh no. They tried to flee in panic. That just made the cops more suspicious, and they were detained on the spot. Wait a minute. We were just talking. Please let us go. Why do we have to get arrested? They struggled, but they were mercilessly put into the patrol car and taken away by the officers. Afterward, they were released, but we got a restraining order against them. Word got out at Alex's workplace about his arrest, which led to his demotion and had his salary reduced, making life even tougher. He got divorced from his second wife and received alimony since the child wasn't his. He also started a legal process to take his name out of the birth certificate. So, in the end, his debt increased with the lawyer fee. Currently, Rose has started working part-time, and they are living a humble life while trying to repay the debt together. Well, it's all their own doing, and they well deserve it. 
Meanwhile, I'm enjoying my ordinary but happy life with my daughter and parents. I'm getting used to my job, and gradually, I'm earning recognition from those around me. I'll continue to dedicate myself to work while watching my daughter grow with my parents by my side. I bought a new house and MIL's stuff arrives. We're moving in, says husband and MIL, but I'm single, I reply. Them. What? One day, a massive amount of my mother-in-law's belongings arrived at my new home. It felt like her way of saying, Once I send it over, it's your problem. We're going to live with my mom from now on. Don't talk back to me. That was the last straw for me. I absolutely refused to live with them. I was determined not to let them have their way and was set on showing them how. My name is Lena, 31 years old. I've been working at a major company for almost 10 years. I wasn't used to the job at first, but they have recently entrusted me with important tasks and I just got a promotion. I met my husband, Mike, who is the same age as me at the same company. He had always talked about wanting to start his own business, and after leaving the company, he made that dream a reality. However, venturing into the unknown world of business was not as easy for him. While he didn't go bankrupt, his earnings are minimal now, and he's been running at a loss. He's gotten to the point where he can't pay the few employees he has left, and now there are only a few people remaining in the company. Thankfully, my salary is decent, so we're not struggling too much financially. If anything, buying my own house has just been pushed back a bit. I've always dreamed of having my own house. When we got married, I made it clear to him. I want to buy our own house as soon as we have the funds. He smiled warmly at my words. You've been saying that since we were dating. Oh, I think it's a great idea. I'll help out too. Really? Thank you. It's been a dream of mine for so long, so I'm glad you said that. Things might get tough, but let's work hard together as a couple. Yeah, thank you. Indeed, when my husband was still working at the same company, our savings were growing smoothly. However, as his business started losing money, he began to dip into his savings more and more. Eventually, he even had to use our joint savings. I ended up giving him half of it. By now, we should have had enough for our dream home. I wouldn't say it was entirely his fault, but we could have bought it a bit sooner than planned. That dissatisfaction was real. When our funds were halved, I was worried about what would happen. However, after saving diligently without touching my bonuses for a few years, I managed to save enough for our dream home by myself. I decided to share the good news with my husband right away. Mike, guess what? I finally saved up enough for our new home. Really? That's amazing. So, I was thinking about checking out some places and visiting construction companies soon. Maybe this Sunday? This Sunday? That won't work. Why not? I have the day off from work, too. It's not that. It's my mom's birthday. I told you we were going to her place. Oh, right. Sorry, I forgot. He clicked his tongue and made a visibly displeased face. Forgetting your husband's mother's birthday isn't that kind of bad? It's way more important than a house, right? Sorry, but I've really been working hard on this. I wanted to get started as soon as possible. I don't want to hear excuses. Forgetting my mom's birthday is unthinkable. You've got her present ready, right? Present? She's been wanting a new washing machine. You forgot already? A washing machine? Wait, are we supposed to buy it? Not we. You're buying it. You know I don't have an income right now. Are you being sarcastic? No, that's not what I meant. 
I tried to explain, but he continued to complain, yelling at me to act like a wife before storming out of the room. He is usually kind and a good person, but his attitude changes drastically when it comes to his mother. After his parents divorced, his mother raised him as a single mom with great effort. It seems his gratitude towards her manifests in this way. Knowing her son is on her side, she always boldly schools me whenever I visit her. Frankly, I couldn't care less about celebrating the birthday of someone who believes me so openly. Though it would upset my husband, our new home is far more important to me. However, as his wife, his mother is family to me too. So, despite my preferences, I ended up celebrating her birthday reluctantly. A few days later, when we visited my mother-in-law, Iris, I wished her a happy birthday. So, anyway, where's my birthday present? I heard you wanted a new washing machine, but there are so many types. What? You haven't bought it yet? I thought I'd ask which one you'd prefer. Without hesitation, she said, Just buy the most expensive one. Excuse me? I said, just buy the most expensive one. I couldn't understand why I was being scolded while she yelled at me, turning red with anger. Mike tried to calm her down while telling me, You're really no good. You know, mom loves expensive brands. Just buy the most expensive one. What? What's going on? It's not like I said I wouldn't buy it. If I had bought it without talking to them first, they would have complained about that too. As I stewed in my frustration, she sighed dramatically. Fine, just transfer $1,500 to my account. What? Didn't you hear me? $1,500. Since you didn't bring a present, you should at least do that. But last month, you said you were struggling with living expenses, so I already gave you $700. We have our own expenses, so $1,500 is a bit much. She got furious, turning red and yelling. What are you talking about? You're being supported by my son. You should have some leeway since Mike is taking care of everything. Well, that's not really... How can you be so obsessed with money? I heard from my son that you're planning to buy your own house. Yes, that's right. So you have the nerve to refuse me $1,500 when you can afford it? What a stingy daughter-in-law I have. I'm disappointed in you. Disappointed? Your son hasn't contributed to living expenses for years and our current Lifestyle is solely supported by my income. She is unaware of the precarious state of her son's business, believing his performance is thriving and supporting our household. I could reveal the truth, but that would undermine his position. Despite this, I remained silent for his sake. Initially grateful, he now behaves as if he's the breadwinner, especially in front of his mother. Hey, Lena. My mom's struggling. Can't you chip in a bit? His complicity in his mother's bullying is routine. Exasperated, I retorted. If you're so concerned, why don't you contribute? I'm covering all our living expenses. You're only saving for the house, so you should be able to help out now. Are you serious? Even the living expenses, I'm... I began to reveal the truth, but he immediately cut me off. You just got your bonus. Use that to help mom. Fine, but this is the last time. I conceded, eventually transferring $1,500 to Iris. Avoiding further conflict seemed easier, and it would cost less than the most expensive washing machine. Months later, despite minor disputes with my mother-in-law and husband, I successfully purchased my new home. I ignored their endless opinions on the layout and decor, having funded it myself. The anticipation of owning my dream home thrilled me. 
As the completion neared and I began packing, my husband critiqued my furniture choices for the new house. You're not planning to put that furniture in our new home, are you? What do you mean? I am because I like them. No way. My mom doesn't like that type of furniture. Why does her preference matter here? He then made an unbelievable statement. Well, duh. She's moving into the new house with us. Since you decided on the house's layout and decor, at least match the furniture to my mom's taste. Don't be too assertive. You're the wife. His absurd reasoning left me with a headache. What was he even talking about? I never agreed to live together. Before it was too late, I made my stance clear. What are you going on about? I have no intention of living with your mother. What? It's natural for a son to invite his mother to live with us in a new spacious house. Stop it. I paid for everything. Shut up. I guess this will be the only way. He stormed out, then returned, brandishing a divorce paper. You know what this is? A divorce paper? What are you trying to do? I thought you wouldn't understand unless I was strict. I got this just in case. You'd be in trouble if I divorced you. His name was already filled in on the husband's section, apparently intending to use it as leverage. Thinking the threat of divorce would make me comply, his shallow tactics left me speechless. Mistaking my silence for defeat, he smugly added, Being divorced now would make you a divorcee. That'll ruin your reputation at work, especially after your recent promotion. What are you trying to say? You're the wife. Just quietly listen to me and my mom. I'll give you time to cool off until the moving day. Alright? My mom will live with us in the new home. Make sure there's a room for her. At that moment, my patience shattered. So if that's how you feel, do whatever you want. I'll make sure to settle the scrudge. A week later, as I unpacked in silence, the doorbell rang. We'll start loading in the boxes now. Expecting a delivery, I opened the door to find a moving truck outside. What's this about? I confronted my mother-in-law who was directing the movers. Iris, what's going on here? I'm moving in today. Mike's at work, so I came by myself. I didn't agree to this. Please leave immediately. What are you saying? We were supposed to live together in this house. No, you're not. I never agreed to that. You decided on your own. What did you say? I turned to the movers, clearly stating... Sorry, guys, but she doesn't live here. Can you take the stuff back? Well, we're just following orders, ma'am. This house is under my name. I can't have unknown items brought in without my consent. Well... The movers hesitantly began to collect the items, prompting an enraged outburst from Iris. Hey, you! What do you think you're doing? Me? Who do you think you are trying to move in without my permission? Of course I'm moving in. You're just the wife, don't talk back. Wife? Me? Yes, you. Just so you know, a mother-in-law's word is law. A daughter-in-law's belongings are mine. I'm single, though. Huh? <laughs> Didn't you hear? I'm single. I divorced Mike recently. What? What are you talking about? That can't be. Mike never said anything. But your son was the one who presented me with the divorce papers, already filled out, which was actually quite helpful. <laughs> wait, wait, this has to be a joke. And a divorce would only trouble you. How would you manage this house without his income? Oh, about that. Your son doesn't earn anything. That can't be. Mike is the president of a company. The president of a company that's on the verge of bankruptcy. 
He's been running at a loss for years, and I've been covering all our living expenses. I kept quiet in front of you, but there's no need to lie now that we're not married. So, this house is really all yours? Yes. With my current salary, paying off the mortgage alone is no issue, so don't worry. You shouldn't underestimate the earnings of someone working for a major corporation. But... So, could you please leave now? And never show up in front of me again. Goodbye. Wait! I cut off my ex-mother-in-law mid-sentence and locked the door. Not long after, my ex-husband called. What the hell is going on? My mom called crying, saying she was kicked out. Who is this? Huh? I told this to my ex-mother-in-law too, but I'm single now. Single? You mean you actually submitted that divorce paper? So what? You were the one who brought it to me, so no complaints, right? Are you crazy? I never intended to actually divorce. It's invalid. To think that instead of apologizing, he would impose his selfishness on me. So I told him. Enough. After all I've done to support you, you're not even thanking me and instead saying the divorce is invalid? Don't make me laugh. Who do you think has been supporting us these past few years? Well, that's... um... But as a married couple, that's natural. You had a duty to support me. Duty? Yes, indeed. So I played along, pretending you were the one earning while you acted all high and mighty. Calm down. I didn't mean any harm. Oh, just shut the F up already. It's too late now. We're divorced strangers now. Your company can go bankrupt for all I care. Enjoy living with your mommy. Wait, please. I'm sorry. I hung up without listening to the rest. Hours later, my ex-husband and ex-mother-in-law tried to force their way into my new home, but I called the police and they were taken away. Apparently, their apartment was already cancelled, leaving Iris homeless. She had no choice but to move into Mike's apartment, but with no income, they couldn't pay the rent. Eventually, his company went bankrupt and they moved into a 40-year-old apartment. Now they barely support themselves with odd jobs. Meanwhile, I was promoted to lead a major project at work. The new house was too big for one, so I invited my parents to live with me. Cutting ties with that family was truly a blessing. I look forward to a fulfilling life in my dream home with my parents.